Everyone back over at the shop, we got an engine, a tranny, and a Hummer body, and a beat up old Suburban all torn apart out here in the lawn, but uh, we're making progress on the build. My dad has actually been working on the frame. So now he is on frame rail number two here, welding it up, getting it ready to go into the other side to try to match it up. And otherwise there's that narrowed up chassis we were talking about kind of coming together. You guys can see it there. And pretty, pretty neat how this is all going to come together. It'll be pretty cool once we can get the Hummer sat on here and see what it looks like. But the frame is starting to come together. And now today we're going to go ahead and grab the engine over here, grab it, set it on an engine stand, and then uh, go ahead and start tearing it down. I'm going to go ahead and work on some of this. So I'm going to get the engine tore down so you can either use it as mock-up, but also get it ready for some mods. We'll probably do similar to like what we've done on the burnout truck put a cam in it head studs you know uh oil pump just kind of freshen everything up and get it ready to go back into the build uh this is all pretty much junk as you guys heard in the other video and then hopefully that is sitting on the chassis here soon so we're gonna go ahead and get the engine on an engine stand and get it pulled inside as yeah, a little tried and true 5.3 <laughs> seen better days it's about to see a whole lot worse days though and it's sitting there revving at seven or eight thousand rpm in a burnout box is it gonna live? We'll find out. Good thing is we can always find another one. All right, guys, we got it off on the engine stand, and we'll try to get it put inside. So there is the 5.3 with that new alternator. So we're gonna tear this thing down. Probably at least do some sort of an intake build. Uh, we're gonna go to billet rail, stuff like that. Try to get it to where it's kind of future proof. So if we want to do some stuff, we're not trying to redo like at least the fuel system or fuel lines or any of that stuff. And then. Uh, we're still not sure what we want to do with the engine here. We've been thinking about a few things. We're, the supercharger is pretty pricey to just buy and slap on top to just try some stuff. We thought about building like a little single turbo. Uh, I got a few ideas still. Thought about just doing an NA build, but we're not too sure on that because it does need some extra power to push that big hunk of material all over the place. So uh, let me know what you guys think we should do as far as that. And we're going uh, to keep thinking and put a 632 in it. Yeah, if I wasn't going S, uh, LS best, I'd put it back. Got this hiding behind the toolbox. Just put the uh, little 632 in it. Which would be kind of cool. I don't know how much that would like the revs, that's for sure. But uh, No. <laughs> but that is kind of part of it. LS Fest has big burnout contests, so that's kind of why a lot of us are wanting to do LS builds. They're simple, they're cheap anyway, for the most part. You still end up having a fair amount of money into them, but we're at least going to do like cam intake, head studs, you know, just kind of the same build I did on Bernie because it, it works. That's what I did on my Camaro at the beginning, and they just... Seem to work that way, so that's what we're gonna uh, work on. We'll keep working on the frame rails. We gotta get the engine kind of pulled down to a, at least just like the long block, get all the crap off of it so you can use it to remock up the motor mounts. Here's the motor mounts on it. He's gonna have to slide these back to about here uh, to get the engine sitting where he wants it in the chassis and then he'll end up building the trans cross member. And then the uh, search on Facebook Marketplace and our buddy Jason posted this up, so we went ahead and grabbed it. That converter might be a little loose, but Maybe we'll try it. Uh, turbo 400, got a shifter for it. So that's all gonna go behind the LS. We're thinking the turbo 400 will help with being the bigger chassis, bigger wheels and everything to help give him an extra gear to get it into one to one and then let, let it eat at that point. So hopefully that'll work out. Uh, and maybe that's what you need, it's like a turbo 400 if you're doing a bigger chassis build. But otherwise making some progress on it. Little by little. You scrape some bruises, but getting rid of a few pieces outside. Yes, yeah, we're so slowly knocking that thing down, and <laughs> and then this is slowly coming. Not not really slowly. I mean, shoot, this has came together pretty fast. Uh, this piece here is actually just to hold the chassis where it needs to be for now until he gets to the frame rail in. But once he gets to the frame rail in, really the body come back on, but he does need to do like the motor mount, tranny mount, and all that, and then hopefully. I guess you'll have this back here still to do. This will be a bit of work. Yeah, that's kind of my plan. Is trimming some of that down. Some of it moved. Get the motor relocated. Then, like I said, I got I got to section this off. I cut all this off here. Then I'll cut the frame. Yeah, off dock the frame in the front and the back. Section the front nose off. That's kind of the plan of attack here. And then. Then you'll be to a point where. Yeah, I'll, then I'll have the motor located, tranny located, and then I'll set the body back on, then I'll build my... Kind of figure out what you're doing here. My body and mounts, which one is about right here. There's one on the back of each one, and it's just about roughly, they're kind of staggered on the Hummer. So there's one. Yeah, the front one's get real tall. So, 
have, have some of that to do. He'll get his two-wheel drive axles on. If you guys didn't notice, he kind of built like a chassis jig right here on the floor that it's not, it's all solid right now. He welded everything. So nothing can really move around, nothing can flex. So it sits right here and everything is real super solid. So pretty neat. Uh, instead of like putting it on the big jig that he has, like he built the Buick on, because this thing's a monster and wouldn't fit on it anyway. So 130 inch wheelbase over here. Yeah, this is, this is probably the biggest chassis I've worked on for. <laughs> First one you've kind of done. As a whole. Piece. Yeah, and then doing the whole like rectangular frame and yeah i've done a bunch of front stubs that kind of stuff on street rods uh sure and i guess some of that's maybe stuff, welded but it's usually only yeah you're just doing like the portion. suspension piece not the actual yeah, whole frame row big piece there's no way it'll fit completely on my jig without <laughs> something yeah like something else supporting it so which this thing like you're not trying to yeah my floors are pretty good we made sure when we put them in here that these are real level true yep so not for this build but for scaling making but hey it's working yeah, no, it's coming together. And then with being able to make weld it and kind of knock some of that stuff together, which you take weld this and then you put them braces like you talked about. But yeah, at least it's uh, coming together pretty pretty quick. And then it's kind of neat seeing just using this little piece to help make the transition up. Uh, he would have built this a little bit different, but the body's real square. It's got a pocket on both sides here. So that's kind of what needed to be done. Yeah, that's the passenger, actually the passenger uh, storage thing below the seat. Yeah, the if they come down, down, they got a big here. box right there. Yeah on both sides everything's for storage on the bottom of them below with the seats that one's a battery box driver's seat really doesn't have much under it but the other two that's kind of what we were talking to is probably keeping the battery like a stock location just trying to simplify some stuff since it's not a full drag build there's a lot you don't have to do on these things which is kind of nice and refreshing to not have to worry about as much stuff but yeah kind of hard to shift gears where you're <laughs> you're so used to oh battery's gonna be back here kill switch da, 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 da. but uh well it's a hummer too i don't i don't know of many people that have done hummer stuff so look different locate or, or a suburban new. build not a lot of burnout suburban builds out there either so no <laughs> all new all different but it is making some progress we can get some seats we'll yeah go, maybe we can do a person and Three passengers. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool to do a four-person burnout in this thing. Yeah, just go out and have some fun, not get real crazy with it, but just have a little, a little, a little fun on four wheels. That's Still might get a little crazy. I don't know if you can really do big burnouts in a. Maybe I can't this drive. Thing. <laughs> Find out what happens though. Well, everybody, back over here at the shop, and a lot has changed. The engine and tranny are in it. The tranny mounts even in it. You've been been busy, huh? Yeah, we've got a made a little bit of headway here. So got the uh, motor, took it, as you can see up on the front, took and roughly moved it 12 inches. Yeah, the old mounts were over here. Yeah, this was the side I still got to do some grinding clean up, moved it back, lowered it. It looks like it's got a pretty severe angle on it, but the frame's level, so when we bring it back down, it's going to not look so so drastic. The uh, They're actually the stock engine mounts off of the Suburban. You just built new hangers, or did you use some of this hanger you cut off, or did you? Yes, yeah, you can see it right here where it cut off. That was actually the cut on the frame, where I sliced it off, cut it here, and then I built this section, narrowed it up. That's more or less a spacer to bring yep. it out to where it was. So I used the same thing, used the same bolts, same thing on this side here. It pretty much, what I did is I took the motor and I, I shifted it off. It was about an inch and, well, total it's two and uh, five eighths inches set to the passenger side these are in the stock location. So what I did is I took the motor and moved it back over three quarters of an inch. That's why this is a little bit further out from, like if you lined this up to what you'd see on a side, just to kind of shift it back over. I don't need as much offset. You can see that motor mount has more stretch on it over here, but this is a little different than most builds because it's more centered in the chassis. Yes, I, I took and brought it back to center. It's still offset. I only brought it three quarters of an inch, whereas opposed, if I had put it dead center, it would have been an inch and five sixteenths total that I would need to move it. So just slid it, just a, favored it over just yeah, a little I, bit more. I basically just brought it back over, lined it up with my rear differential in the point. Yeah, you guys can see that. my center line. So I'm matching some of the factory uh, rear end of specs like that. So I trued up my drive shaft like that's the purpose for the moving it back over the three quarters of an inch. Because with the transfer case and all that stuff, I'm not sure how. All that stuff's all gone now. 
everything's gone. The old torsion bar mount, so with the new frame in it, all that stuff's it's, see ya. So it's gone. So yeah, that's the intent is to put work on putting some coilovers. My buddy Pete, he came in, stripped off the frame, so we have a nice cleaner start to the to the frame. Pete's Vegas is actually over there. They've been working on some of that. He's uh, getting a new engine for it, so it's over here, and then they can do the swap and everything for that. The LS is over there. It's getting torn down. <laughs> and uh, he, you actually ended up just saying, seeing if you could pick up a block out of the junkyard for mock-up, make yeah. it a little easier on you. Yeah, I had my buddies pick up the block for me up here at Upola because I got tired of borrowing blocks and so it seems like this isn't going to be the, probably the last build so <laughs> we need a mock-up block. For LS's are pretty handy you can kind of put them in anything so if you got a mock-up block it's uh, pretty nice. Yeah it's half the battle I'll just have to get me some mock-up heads and I'll be good to go. Be good to go. And then in the back you're kind of just looking at this you're figuring you know you're going to have to put some gussets in here because it does move around a little bit yeah. with this. We got um, some flex I'm basically waiting on once I get the body sitting on here so I know there's a body mount that sets in here and kind of see how that's going to incorporate with sitting in here and then I can tie some of these corners yeah. back together. So each corner's got kind of those little buckets like we talked about where they yeah. are storage or whatever. Sets. So you kind of have to see where that's at and build a build a brace or add some plate or whatever he's got to do to that. Yeah, and I took and shaved the frame off about an inch and a quarter. Cut the, cut the hump out of the top of these here so the body would set down instead of cutting the body and letting it come up in. He's thinking this is kind of where ride height's going to be, so it's going to need like a shorter shock and all that. Also, the yep. uh, the spring perch is gone, so he could get a shorter spring, add that back in, or whatever he decides to do in here. Maybe a coil over, build you a little coil over mount with some yep. tabs or something. Yeah, probably put a bar it. back across here, put coil over mounts off it. That way, I got some adjustability. Not that you're going to need much for a burnout vehicle, but if we ever drive it on the street, I'd like to have a little bit of... Well, that's some of what we don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe when things get crazy and they get real competitive, maybe there is something to have suspension. Maybe there isn't. It's... Right. So it'd be better to have the option instead of just deleting it and get rid of it. You can always throw a solid bar in there, but... It'd be so easy just to put a bar in or weld it. <laughs> yeah. And we chopped off, I think about a foot and a half. That's where we had it marked in the last video. So the other mount, the body mounts are set on the back here. So that's our next thing is to get the body moved in, set, start getting my locations where that's at, and then I'll get them somewhat built. And then I'll pull the body back off, finish welding, gusseting, finish tying up my back end. Be able to weld around all your body mounts stuff. once you kind of get them in place and everything. Yes. Yeah, because I still got an awful lot of welding. Just kind of here, there, touch, but I'm... I'm you're kind of where you're at where you got to see what's next with... Yeah, just keep moving forward. So otherwise it's coming along guys, we're here and that is what my dad's here, I'm here, Alex is here and Pete is here. And we're gonna see if we can lift up the old Hummer body and uh, just see if we can slide it on here without using the Bobcat because the height and everything else. So we're gonna try to get it over here, get it on these buckets, carry it over and set it on here. Sounds good. Sounds easy. Sounds easy. So well, we're gonna find out really how heavy this thing is here in a second. Use the old Bobcat, get it over here close. Beyond us. I think it only weighs about 300 pounds, but I think it's a bit more okay. Especially up in the front and back, not so heavy. Front, it's got a lot more material up here. Bucket ride. Hummer life. See, this is that huge tunnel. Tons of room in that thing. Make you jealous on pulling trannies in this. Just hope we don't ever have to really pull trannies in this thing. <laughs> So we got it kind of sitting on here, but we still need to come down a couple inches. Uh, we got a little, there we go. We got this little like, wire there thing in here that was uh, pinching yeah, into the frame. Me, uh, I need to... up front here is so he's gonna remove that and yeah, we'll see I if we can get it sitting down in there. there. Nice tight fit, but uh, me, uh, almost a little too tight. A... Well, there it is, sitting on the chassis. Got uh, yeah, got some room to do some things, but also gets a little bit tighter as it comes back. I was thinking about this is I was like, oh, we'll have tons of room to run some huge intake, but now that the body's sunk down over it, not so much. It actually starts getting a little tighter, but 
Step back if you guys can see it right there. That's pretty much right height for what he's figured. Not much. Uh, is that right there? So I mean, you pretty much be able to walk right up in it and step right into it and get in just a little bit. Uh, not a crazy. I mean, definitely way lower than for some set. So it's not totally slammed, but it's definitely definitely pretty low. So. Yeah, looking pretty neat. And first look at it being on the ground here. See if we can get another look at it there. It's a, uh, it's a Hummer on a modified bourbon frame, though. And you guys can kind of see where all the trans mount, everything kind of lines up. But now that the body's sunk down over the frame rail, it definitely starts cutting your tolerances off a little bit, which is pretty, pretty crazy. This is what we were talking about right here with the pockets back in here. So now you can see. Since this is square, this is where you had to build that little square piece, but now you'll be able to build this. Uh, that's the rear mount. So even off of probably, you can almost come up with your little triangle piece here and then come straight up off of it to make your body mount. Not too bad then. So that's what he prefer not to start cutting and modifying the body. So that's why that had to stay square because otherwise you could have notched it, but then you're modifying the aluminum on the body and stuff, which would kind of suck. So well, that's, that's a LS swapped. Homer Suburban, coming, making progress. Well, I'm ready to go full send burnout. Look, your shirt even matches. Perfect. Blend right into this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Knew there was a reason I wore this. I think it'd be cool to like leave the steering wheel and if you could somehow make the shifter and stuff work, I don't know. Yeah, but. I might have to lubricate it. I think you gotta, that moves a little bit. I might have to actually get some stuff and spray it in there. And be kind of cool. Try to keep as much of it, but otherwise, LS is in, mocked up for the most part. This will be my Get break. you a nice seat cover. I'm able to ship break. <laughs> Old Driftmeister over here. Getting after it. You have four people sitting in this thing. Eat lunch off the center. Yep, that'll be Lil's uh, Old dinner table over there. Hang out. So he is actually talking. He's ordered some of the glass to put in here as well as the uh, lights that go in like the back to finish it off. So you got some of those pieces coming. So so close, but yet still so far away. <laughs> you ever need to pull tranny bolts though? No problem. So I ended up doing a quick little mock-up of the front end so that he can verify where he wants to cut the front end off. And then he was talking that these little pivot points here and then you said there's a front bumper too right that comes off of well, that or whatever you end up building if we put that brush guard like which i know you might not need it on this no. maybe just some sort of normal bumper just or something a visual. yeah i thought about putting a little hummer half bumper where it goes out yeah that wouldn't be so bad it's like this and drops down and you still see the tire stuff from the front be kind of cool mm -hmm. And stuff like that. So it's just as wide as the like the, basically the headlights. You guys can see the LS all tucked in there, little bitty guy. Radio will probably end up being back here. If I do my uh, airdrop, I gotta have a big enough bumper to hold the comes out here. How's your big old hooks on it? Oh no, I'm sorry. We lost all this that. Is, this is the pickups up here. And then Which the, doesn't the exist rear, no the, more. The rear bumper is the one. So it doesn't have the big frame that comes up to that anymore and stuff. So uh, I could build all that. Build your big old hook. So otherwise, that's the uh, Homer kind of sitting there, kind of right height, kind of with the body on it, kind of mounted up. Getting a lot closer than it was a few weeks ago with just a Suburban. At least it looks like something sitting there. Kind of looks like a LS swapped Hummer. It's, it's in a sense LS swapped, it has an LS in it. It's going to be a little bit longer till it runs and stuff, but we were looking at some more exactly it's got a hit, but as you guys can see it fits actually for as far as sinking the body over it and everything else kind of coming in, not not too bad. Stub the front, finish off the back, and he'll have a pretty much a roller other than doing some suspension. So That'll be it for this one. The body's on it. He's going to work on fabbing up some stuff in the front, body mounts and all of that, and then on to the next thing, right? There's always some next thing. Yeah, now we're just talking about all the big parts orders that need to happen for parts, header build, all that type of stuff, and figuring out what power adder we're going to exactly put on this thing, uh, which will decide what EFI and everything else we're going to need for it, what fuel, fuel pump, fuel system, just the fun part really begins. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> wiring, all that type of stuff. So it starts stacking up now. Yep. So if you guys want to see some more of this Hummer build, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.